How you waking with a start? No water, no Caspian. Oh, goddess, what was that about? I mean, it's not like it was unpleasant. The Caspian looks at me like I'm dirt beneath his feet. The idea of him and I together would probably repulse him to his very core. At the same time, though, I would have liked that kiss. Well, at any rate, I better, I better get up and get going. I barely get a few steps into the village proper before a group of villagers carrying bolts of fabric come running up to me all at once. Miss, uh, miss, please, if you'll just have a look at these fabric swatches. Don't bother with that fool's swatches. See here, miss, we have a dress already made for you. Please, miss. Those rags aren't fit to grace your body, miss. We've got a gown waiting for you in our shop. It seems as if all the village tailors have decided to try their luck at once this morning. I bow silently, or I bow slightly, and place my hand upon my chest in a gesture of thanks. Sirs, you honor me with your gifts. Unfortunately, I simply don't have the time to consider them right now, as I must be on my way to school. But thank you for thinking of me. I will be sure to remember you when the time comes to make my decision. The villagers cease elbowing each other and bow in return before quietly dispersing. Perhaps my civility has reminded them of their manners. Well, that's one group taken care of. I can see another group of villagers approaching, and this time they seem to be carrying sweets and tiny cake samples. Do all our tradesmen travel in herds in this village? The baker's arguments reach me long before they do. So help me, Magmus, if you touch my cakes one more time! What are you even doing here, Adriatico? You're a carpenter! I may be a carpenter, but my hobby cakes taste a thousand times better than those dry, crumbling little insults you're carrying in your hands! As if you can even talk, Yelavar! You might as well be a carpenter, too! Your cakes are like wood! I would love nothing more than to sit and stuff myself with sweets. But at this rate, there's no way I'll make it to class on time. Just as a small crowd of villagers arrive, I look across the square and spot Caspian on his way to class. I give him a desperate wave. He gives me a strange look, but when he notices the small crowd approaching me, he begins to make his way over to us. Just as the villagers begin to thrust their baked goods towards me, I hold out my hand to stop them. Sirs, you honor me with your gifts, but I see my classmate across the square and I promised him we would walk together. It really must be going now. Please feel free to deliver any samples to my quarters, thanks! The villagers pause for a moment, surprised by my outburst. Just in the nick of time, Caspian arrives. He does not even bother addressing the group. He simply grabs me by the shoulders and steers me out of the crowd. Um, Caspian? Caspian continues marching forward, even though we've long since, uh, since left the villagers behind. He doesn't seem to hear me. Caspian, you can let go now. They're gone. Caspian suddenly seems to notice he's still dodgy, uh, doggingly marching me to the classroom. He lets go of me immediately. My apologies. I was... focused. Wow. Is Caspian embarrassed? I've never seen him be anything other than angry or ultra-confident. That's alright. Thanks for the rescue, Caspian. It will only get worse from here. You showed them weakness. Every artisan in this village and the next will be clamoring to push their wares on you. Weakness? Was I supposed to fight them or something? In my home village, our artisans are similarly aggressive. You must show them no mercy, and you must make an example out of those who continue to harass you. Make an example out of them? How? First, you must send an underling to his house in the dead of night. And then, once you have broken his spirit, you make him apologize in front of the entire village for the disrespect he has visited upon you and your entire family. That... Uh, that sounds really... effective, Caspian. But I don't think the elders would allow that. Perhaps not. I forget sometimes Akash is much more lax than my own village. It must be nice not having to be on your guard all the time, though, right? 
Having to be so harsh on everyone must be exhausting. Leadership requires a great deal of responsibility. It is a burden I carry gladly. But I must admit, life in Akash is easier. Caspian seems to be looking past me. I turn around to follow his gaze, and some see some of our villagers headed in the other direction. They're heavily armed, which is unusual to see in the middle of the village. Where do you think they're headed with all those weapons? They must be checking in on the prisoner. I wonder what they're going to do to him. I hope they don't hurt him. Do not tell me you are concerned for this human boy. I'll walk it back just because Caspian doesn't like it if I'm mean to him. I'm not concerned for him, but I am concerned for my people. If we start behaving like humans, we're no better than they are. This is true. We must hold ourselves to a higher standard. However, in this case, there is no cause for concern. Elder Saul has assured us no harm will come to the prisoner. It would be useless worrying about this matter any further. He's got a good point. All right. We walk to the rest of the way of the class in thoughtful silence. As we make our way to the training yard for today's magic lesson, Elder Soul is already waiting for us. He watches with barely concealed impatience as we filter in one by one. Today will be a bit different. You're nearing your coming of age ceremony, which means we only have a week left together. Normally, I would assign you partners. Uh oh. But your classmate here has an extra choice the rest of you don't. Here it comes. Five heads swivel around to look at me in perfect unison. Elder Soul's intimidating gaze falls upon me. You've studied the elements for the last 14 years of your life, but you're going to have to make a commitment. You'll be choosing your own partner today. You won't have many more chances to explore magic in a neutral environment like this, so make the most of your time. I break away from the line and turn to look at my classmates. All of them look at me expectantly, except for Lux, who gives me his usual serene smile. Nothing ever seems to bother him. Don't drag it out, darling. Just break their hearts and get it over with. Have you ever even seen her using wind magic outside of class? You left confidence behind long ago, buddy. We're getting into delusional territory here. Like, Earth isn't just as useless for defense. You do realize Earth magic isn't all flowers and grass, right? <sighs> it's not a popularity contest, guys. She needs to think about her future. All of you, be quiet. After some consideration, I take in a deep breath and point my finger dramatically at... Caspian. Obviously, it's the Caspian. Let's put, run through. Caspian! Rocco crosses his arms and huffs. Come now, darling. Your own kind. Hasn't your family taught you enough about water magic? You're just mad she didn't choose you, Rocco. I admit I'm a bit hurt, but I know our love can survive this betrayal. Enough joking around. Class is still in session. The poor girl doesn't need any more pressure from the lot of you. He places a large hand on my shoulder and gives me an awkward pat. I think he means to reassure me. It's rather sweet. The real choice is in less than two weeks. Try to keep an open mind as long as you can. Thank you, Elder. I will. Caspian doesn't even respond to Rocco. He simply walks to the corner of the yard and looks at me expectantly. I follow him. It doesn't surprise me that you would consider water magic. Your family lineage is known across the land. But if we are to work together, I need to know what you are looking to accomplish in this session. Mm, let's try blunt, I guess. Just wanted to make sure I'm not missing anything. A general review will be fine. Understood. I don't even know if there was a better answer. It doesn't surprise me that you would consider water magic. Your family lineage... I'm pretty certain of my choice already, but... I've always admired the way you handle yourself in our magic lessons. I can always learn more. Indeed, there is always more to learn. Water magic is similar to fire magic in that it is easy to learn, but difficult to master. Any young elemental female can be Let's taught. Let's just see. 
It doesn't surprise me that you would consider water uh, magic. Uh, I just wanted to get to know you more. Why? We've been classmates since we were little kids, but I don't know a thing about you. We're about to graduate and go our separate ways soon. That has always been intentional. I have told you everything you needed to know about me. No more, no less. Are you serious? Do you really think everyone is coming to you with their hand out asking for something? I didn't ask you how powerful your family is or what kind of resources your village controls. I just wanted to know what kind of person my classmate is. In two weeks' time, you can return to your home village and forget you ever knew me. You should thank me for making the process easier on you. Now then, are you finished? Are you? Excuse me? Are you finished patting yourself on the back for being so inaccessible and mysterious? We can begin our lesson whenever you are ready. Water magic is similar to fire magic in that it is easy to learn but difficult to master. Any young elemental female can be taught to summon water, but true mastery comes only with years of dedicated training. Right. Let us begin with the obvious. Caspian holds his hand out and summons a ring of water. It floats in the air some distance away from both of us. No doubt you played this game with your father as a child. Aim for the ring. I point at the ring and expertly shoot a small jet of water from my index finger. It sails easily through the center without disturbing Caspian's ring. Adequate. Let's try another. Caspian moves the ring further back and narrows it considerably. I point my finger at the ring and send a jet straight through the center without even trying. Sorry, I thought you meant to make this one more challenging. Let us move on to something more age-appropriate. Let the record reflect that you have an excellent grasp on this children's game. Um, you chose to have us play it, Caspian. Let us try something more difficult, then. Caspian blasts me with a jet of water. I only managed to move out of the way in time. Just what do you think you're doing? Don't dodge. Show me your defensive capabilities. All right, but at least give me some warning next time. Before I can even finish my sentence, Caspian sends another blast of water my way. I instinctively put up my hands in front of me and summon a wall of water to shield me. Caspian's jet splashes harmlessly to the floor. Better. Caspian's aura are a blur, sending out a flurry of blasts, high, low, and everywhere in between. I block them all and direct my own at Caspian's face. He blocks it easily, but gives me a half smile. Very good. Your family should be proud. Thanks, Caspian. Maybe we could train together again sometime. It seems unlikely, as I am incredibly busy. Oh. But if it should come to pass that we are in the training yard at the same time, I would consider it. No matter how pompous and self-righteous he is, I have always find myself wanting to be closer to him. One little half smile, and suddenly I forget everything that came before. But get a grip on yourself. He's not that handsome. Oh god, who am I kidding? Yes, he is. I'm hopeless. Look alive. A jet of water knocks me off my feet, interrupting my thoughts. I rescind my praise. You clearly have much to learn yet. Ugh! I'm going to blast the beard right off your face, you inconsiderate, ill-tempered! Let your magic do the talking. It's been a long day. The villagers clamoring for my attention only got worse on my way back. I might need to start taking another route home. Despite everything I've been through in the last few days, I, as I lie down to sleep, I find my thoughts constantly returning to that human boy. I'll never forget the way he looked at me. He was a lot cuter than I ever imagined a human would be. It feels a bit strange to think of that, but I can't help it. I yawn and snuggle up against my pillow. I wonder what he thinks about all day tied up in that room. Is he scared? Angry? Does he hate all of us? I wish I could talk to him for just a little bit. I'm so curious. But I really ought to turn in early and get some sleep. On the other hand, this might be a perfect opportunity to go see him. Most of the village should be wait winding down for the night, and the guards shouldn't be too on edge yet since they've only just started their shift. I like to sneak out so I can see uh, the reason why Caspian was following me, or any boy for that matter. 
push the blankets off me and set up. I'll never get a better opportunity than this. Who knows? When, uh, who knows when they'll be ransoming him back? I whispered to myself in the darkness. Okay, let's do this. I peek my head out the door and glance both ways. Nothing. I can hear Rocco plucking away at his loot in his room and singing horribly off-key. Perfect. No one will hear me leaving over that din. Oh, Rocco, the goddess blessed you with good looks and the ability to play, but she stopped there. We've been training for years in the event of a human incursion, but I never imagined I'd be putting these skills to use in my own village. The village is much quieter at this time of the evening, although there's still quite a few people awake. If I'm spotted, I'm done for. Better be careful. Here we go. I can't believe I made it. That was a lot easier than I expected. I allow myself to bask in my victory. There's just one guard here. I think Elder Soul mentioned that the per perimeter of the village tends to be more heavily guarded than the inside. Our magic is usually enough to stop anything or anyone from getting in. The sneaking around stops here, though. There's only one door. I take a deep breath, then boldly strolled right up to the guard at the door. He snaps out of his apparent stupor and blocks the doorway with his massive body. You! Where do you think you're going? Oh, I'm just here to observe the prisoner for our history class. We're doing a special unit on human elemental relations. He frowns. I was never told of this. None of your classmates have been by today. Shit. Oh, well, this is a little embarrassing. I just really love history, and I wanted to impress Elder Glenn. Couldn't you give me just a little time? He squints at me suspiciously. Ten minutes. That's it. Oh, thank you so much. Good luck with your studies. It's rather dark inside. A small magical light floats near the post the boy is shackled to, illuminating his face. He looks up with a start at the sound of my entrance. Oh, it's you. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? I shut the door behind me quietly. I'm not sure exactly. I just felt like I needed to come talk to you without everyone else here. To see for myself. To see what? How dangerous I am? He throws his hands up in frustration, causing his chain chains to clank noisily. He shudders, his shoulders sag at the audible reminder of his current predicament. Whatever you're going to do, just get it over with. I don't care anymore. I kneel down in front of him and study his features in the dim light. His handsome young face looks rather worse for wear since the last time I saw him. Have they treated you poorly here? What kind of a question is that? Look at me! I take his manacled hand in mine and give him a kind smile. He deflates completely. You're absolutely right. I'm so sorry. It must be so hard to be away from your family and people. His mouth opens and closes wordlessly for a few moments. He finally settles in an awkward nod. What's your name? Daniel. Daniel. That's a beautiful name. What does it mean? What's it mean? Uh, I don't really know. Human names don't always have a meaning. The light is dim, but I can tell he's blushing. He's so easily flustered. I pat his hand and gently let it go. I'm not really sure why I'm here right now, but it certainly is not to explore human sexuality. It's time for me to go. I hope when you go back to your people, you'll tell them that not all of us are so bad over here. As I stand to leave, he suddenly looks despondent. Please, don't leave me here by myself. I'm sorry. I hear the door open behind us. What are you doing here in the middle of the night? I don't have to explain myself to you, you know. But I just wanted to talk to him on my own. I don't know what I was expecting exactly. But I needed to come and find out for myself, whatever it was going to be. Have you finished whatever it was you were doing here? I take one little look at the human boy. His sad brown eye seems to plead with me to stay. Yeah. Then let us leave. Now.
thank you for the time. Right. I wait until Caspi and I are out of earshot of the guard. We walk down the path towards the student quarters. What were you doing here, anyway? How did you know where I went? For someone who wished not to be seen, you left an exceedingly obvious trail. Okay, but why are you here in the first place? I was concerned for your safety. When I saw the direction your trail was going... Why weren't you in your room? It is none of your business. But sometimes I go for a walk in the moonlight. I can't help but feel a bit annoyed. I was doing just fine on my own, Caspian. I never asked for your help. And I never asked you to thank me, so save your anger. You are the only female elemental in this village, and your safety is a burden all of us must carry together. You are going to regret that. You're so heartless sometimes. Look at her, she's gonna cry. You're a monster. Heartless? Yeah. You have no idea what I'm going through. But you track me down in the middle of the night to... What? Humiliate me? Talk down to me? And then you call me a burden to our entire village? If you think I'm such a burden, I don't need your help anymore. Perhaps I misspoke. I should not have used the term burden. Oh, it's too late, buddy. Don't lie to me, Caspian. I know you don't like me. Do not presume to know how I feel about you. So then tell me. Well then, enlighten me. You are an adequate classmate. All I can do is laugh. What is so funny? <laughs> I don't know why I was expecting anything else. <laughs> Come on, let's just go. Yes. <laughs>